Do you think we would detect the the technology, the objects created by aliens before we detect the aliens? Possibly. So when you're talking about measuring assembly index, um, yeah. don't you think we would detect the garbage first? Like at the outskirts of alien civilizations, is it just gonna be trash? <laughs> uh, uh, I think I would come back to Arecibo. The Arecibo message sent from the Arecibo telescope built okay. by Drake, I think, and, and Sagan. How's Arecibo spelled? A-R-E-C-I-B-O. Yes. Thank you. ARC, ARC. And there we go. They got up there. That, that's this telescope that yeah. sent the message that you're talking yeah. about. So that message was sent where? It was beamed at, it beamed at a star, a specific star, um, and it was sent out many years ago. Um, and what they did, so this is why I was pushing on binary. It's a binary message. I think it's a semi-prime length number of characters. So I think 20, 73 by 23, I think. And it basically represents human bit, proton, um, binary human beings, DNA, male and female, and it's it's really cool. Mm -hmm. But I'm just wondering if um, it could be done, not making any because he's made assumptions that aliens speak binary. Why yeah. make that assumption? Why not just assume that if the difference between physics, chemistry, and biology is the amount of memory that's instead uh, that's recordable by the substrate, then surely. The universal thing. My, I'm going to make some sacrilegious statement, which I think is pretty awesome um, for people to argue with. So this is uh, we're looking at an image where it's the 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 entirety of the message yeah. encoded in binary, and then there's a probably interpretation of different parts of that image. There's a there's a person. Um, there's green parts. It looks like uh, for people just listening, like a Tetris, a game of Tetris. So, so it's it, encoding in minimal ways a bunch of cool information, probably representing so, all of us. Apparently. So at the top, yeah. it's kind of teaching us how to count, all of and then it all goes all the way down, teaching you chemistry, and then just says, but it makes so many assumptions. And I think if we can actually, so look, I think I mean Sarah's much more eloquent in expressing this, but I'll have a go, and you can correct it if you want. Mm -hmm. Which is like, um, we one of the, things that Sarah has had a profound effect on the way I look at the origin of life. And this is one of the reasons why we're working together, because we don't really care about the origin of life. We want to make life, make aliens, and find aliens. Make aliens, find aliens. I think we might have to make aliens in the lab before we find aliens in the universe, right? Mm -hmm. I think that would be a cool way to do it. So what is it about the universe that creates aliens? Well, it's selection through assembly theory, creating memories. Because when you create memories, you can then command your domain. You can basically do stuff. You can command matter. So we need to find a way, by understanding what life is, of how the minimal way to command matter, how that would emerge in the universe. And be, if we want to communicate, I mean, maybe we don't want to necessarily uniformly communicate. Um, what I would do, perhaps, if I had, is I would send out lots of probes away from Earth, that have this magic way of communicating with aliens, get them quite far away from Earth, <laughs> plausibly deniable, and then send out the message that would then attract all the aliens, and then basically work out if they were friend or foe and how they want to hang out. The message is being something that has to do with the memories? Yes, like the, the assembly version of Arecibo, so that everyone in the universe that has been understands what life is. So aliens need to work out what they are. Once they've worked out what they are, they then can work out how to encode what they are, and then they can go out and send messages. It's like the universal, um, the L Rosetta Stone for life in the universe is working out how the memories are built. I don't know, if, Sarah, you have any, well, whether, um, whether that you would agree with that. No, I, I, I wanted to raise a different point, which is about the fact that we can't see the aliens yet because we haven't gotten the technology. And presumably, we think assembly theory is the right way of doing it. But I don't think that we know how to go from the kind of data you're describing, Lex, like, you know, visual data or smell, mm -hmm. to construct the assembly spaces yet. And in some ways, I think that the problem of life detection really is the same problem at the foundations of AI, that we don't understand how to get machines to see causal graphs, to see reality in terms of causation. Um, and so I, I think assembly and AI are going to intersect in interesting ways, hopefully.